Hey there, it's Jacqueline. It's a cooking class, but don't get mad at me. It's going to be so easy today. I don't even know if I should call it a cooking class, but as you can tell, I'm getting into Super Bowl season and I am more about the game than the food. I know, I can't believe I'm saying that. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to share a really easy recipe for you to share with the friends that you're maybe inviting over or if you're going to someone's place, you can take this with you. So what are we gonna work on? Well, we need salsa. And I'm looking at this going, oh my gosh, I'm having a spice emergency. There is not enough salsa in here to make this recipe. So let me go and grab another jar. Certainly a good thing that I know an amazing Epicure ambassador. In fact, she lives right in the same house. It's me. It's one of the reasons I love Epicure. If you love Epicure, you should really consider sharing the product with your friends and family because I just think it's the best job ever. Anyway, I usually keep one of everything in my house just in case I'm running low, which I am today. So we're gonna follow the recipe on the back of the jar, except we're going to add an additional something just to make it a little different for Super Bowl. So it says, stir in two tablespoons of the mix to a cup of diced tomato and a splash of lime. I'm making this extra special. I am all about football, as I said. Ah, the food is a little bit of a sideline, but it's still gotta be good. And so I've decided I'm gonna use fire roasted diced tomatoes today. I like this um, product because I find that it's not so um, juicy. It's not so watery, so runny. Plus, having it fire roasted gives it just that extra little bit of flavor. So now we're now gonna use our four in one spoon. And clearly, you can see that I was gonna have a spice emergency. I don't even have half a tablespoon there. And I do want to, normally I tell people, don't put two tablespoons in because it makes it super, super hot. I'm still gonna say the same because when we pack our jars, they're super fresh and there's way more flavor in our jars than there are in the store-bought because they've been sitting in warehouses and store shelves for a very long time versus us where it's pretty darn fresh. So I always say spice down and you can always spice up later. So I had about a half a tablespoon there. I'm going to put in about another tablespoon. So half a tablespoon, so about a tablespoon in total. And I'm finding that's a really good start just to see if it's hot enough for you. Remember the spice that you're putting in here is what controls the heat and you're in the driver's seat for that. I noticed I went, I have a lime in the fridge all the time, but I noticed my husband must have had a beer the other night because there's a wedge pulled out of it. Busted. Anyway, I'm using our citrus press. And of course, lime green, put it in this direction. And we're just gonna give a splash of lime. You don't need the whole lime. This is just gonna give that nice citrusy flavor. And we're just gonna mix this up. Let it sit for, I don't know, it'll, if you can let it sit for five or six minutes and then go taste it and see if you need to add more spice to it or not. I'm just gonna taste it right away. Remember, the longer you leave it, it's, it's going to get a little bit hotter. So let me just get a spoon and let me taste it. Sorry, pop it out on the screen. Mm. Okay, that's got a really nice heat. Already, I know that once it's getting a little bit softer, it's going to have some really good punch to it. Much like the game, how it play. Now, what I'm gonna do a little bit different is I've got some cream cheese. I've warmed it up a little bit in our four cup um, microwavable bowl. And we're, I'm gonna add this to the tomato salsa because we're gonna make a nice creamy sauce. And this is one of the reasons why you can 
you know, if you've ever made salsa and it's just like, oh my gosh, overkill, you've got a little bit too much heat, always throw dairy in it. It's a good way to sort of mellow out the flavor. So now all we're gonna do is we're going to get this nice and creamy, and then we're gonna make a charcuterie board. So because this is, um, you know, the tomatoes are juicy, you're gonna find, I know I've seen recipes where people make a salsa, but it's hard enough that they can actually make it in the shape of a football. Clearly, you can see that with the way I'm making this, it is not gonna be in the shape of a football. So if you happen to have um, a bowl that's sort of oblong, that will work really good because we're going to make this look like a football, even if we're not really making it the exact shape. So I'm getting it nice and creamy here. And this is, um, like I said, the reason that you want to warm up your cheese just a little bit is it just makes it so much easier to mix. So there I've got our creamy salsa. Honest to goodness, you, you might think, okay, this is like really dumb. This isn't a cooking class, Jack. You, it's so darn easy. You have to try it. It's so delicious. So you can serve this with homemade nachos, or you can have it with veggies. You can use it with a pasta sauce. As you can see, I've got lots here. It's too much for the bowl. I'm not going to throw it away. Um, I'm just going to use it so that I can re refill it as the day goes by because chances are we're going to get this nibbling the minute people come in the door for the uh, Super Bowl party and then by the time halftime gets there I may have to replenish. So to make it look like a football you may be able to find some mozzarella cheese in your house. So we're going to make a strip down the middle which is of course our football line. We're gonna make the stitches. We're gonna put this on a charcuterie board and we're gonna put some veggies on it now. So let's, let's have some fun with some of the things that we've got in the fridge. Should probably move that over and still see it a bit. Okay, so I have a little bit of celery. I have learned I don't know how many times I've bought stocks of celery and I never go through it. It's just like, oh my gosh, I've got to make celery, celery, celery. I am now buying it by the stick. So this is one stick of celery because I am just not buying a whole thing of celery anymore. I just have to be so creative with it. So we're just going to start plating some colors around here. I love carrots, and of course, carrots are so inexpensive. You can do these up in advance, and a big tip here if you're doing them up in advance, put them in water in a bowl in the fridge. That keeps them nice and crispy. So a lot of these things you can do well in advance of the game. Okay, you want less stress, so there's more fun for you. Okay, we've got some Cauliflower, of course, you probably heard that I went to the store and I got a monster cauliflower. So I made sure I kept some flowerettes there. Uh, I made pizza the other night uh, for, um, what was it, Valentine's Day, and my husband likes pepperoni, so I kept a little bit back. So I've got a little bit of some pepperoni sticks. I've got some broccoli because of course I made the broccoli cheese soup and kept a little bit back. Can you see how like, this is like, I don't, I'm just using up things. I plan in advance. I just buy what I need. I'm not wasting. I've got some breadsticks that I found downstairs, which is great. And the last thing that I had is I had a yellow pepper because I put some peppers on my pizza and I wanted to just show you how I cut this. I used the top part for the pizza, but when you cut the top off, it's really easy for you to get nice rings if you're doing a charcuterie board. You just stick your finger inside there and pull it 
out, okay? So now if you have a sharp knife, you can put little rings on your plate. I don't know if you can see this, sort of, yes? Okay, I'm sliding over to this side. So you can put some rings on here to make it look a little decorative. Mm. If you'd sooner and you want to have some slices instead, feel free to just do up some little knife cuts here. You can set those just along here as well. And we've only got four or five people coming over. So my, my tray does not need to be so full. I will also make sure that I put some tacos over on this side, but I am going to wrap this up and I'm going to set it. So my creamy salsa charcuterie board for my few guests that I've got coming over are here. So at this point, of course, I'm gonna put some taco chips on here. I've got a little spot over in the corner that I'll put it on. But at this point, short of the breadsticks, I'll take these off. I would just wrap this up in cello, put it in my fridge, and I'm ready to go. So I don't have to panic. I can totally be into the game. So I hope you enjoyed that. Give the creamy salsa a try. I know it sounds so simple, putting cream cheese in our salsa, but if you've never tried it, you don't know what you're missing. So may the best team win. Um, as I'm recording this, my team is, uh, I think, going to be in, in the play. I wanted to give you some fun food facts about Super Bowl. It started in 1966, and this is for the National Football League. As you can tell, I'm a Packer fan. Um, the most ordered item for a uh, Super Bowl game is pizza. So remember, you can make your own homemade pizza as well. Save yourself a lot of time in the wait up, waiting line. The next uh, most important um, ordering item or something that's served at Super Bowl is wings. So if you're fortunate to have some of our wing seasoning from the summer, pull them out, get your air fryer out or your oven on and make some wings because apparently people love wings for their Super Bowl. And uh, of course, meatballs and beer. And how much beer do people actually drink during Super Bowl? Okay, I wrote this down because I couldn't believe it. 325 0.5 million gallons of beer are served during Super Bowl weekend. That is the equivalent of filling Olympic sized swimming pools 2,000 times. That's a lot of beer. So I don't know what you're planning on drinking. I totally plan on having some great food, some great friends, and may the best team win. Thank you for watching my cooking class. I hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you another time on another Thursday. From my kitchen to yours, all the best. Take care and thanks for watching. Bye for now.